The bridge over the Niger, the sole road link between Nigeria and what until the beginning of this year was the rebel territory of Biafra. It was wrecked by the Biafrans to halt the federal advance, but has now been repaired. On the eastern bank, a reminder that Uli airstrip is not far away. At the eastern end of the bridge is the former Biafran town of Anitra, taken by the federal troops in March 1968. Its position made it one of the most fought over and consequently one of the most heavily damaged towns in Nigeria. This was the massive and highly important Onitsha market, built at a cost of more than half a million pounds. Dr. Azikwe, former Nigerian president, once supported Biafra, but ended the war on the federal side. After eight months of peace, Onitsha is still battered, but is making steady progress and is on the way to recovering some of its former status as one of the Federation's most important trading centers. One of the main problems, of course, is food. When Biafra finally fell, it was divided into three separate states, with most of the Biafran heartland being incorporated into the East Central state. East Central now contains something like eight million people, many of whom are impoverished and hungry. Relief workers, both from the federal government and from the international voluntary agencies, have made great efforts to distribute seeds, so that next year's harvest, at least, will be there to lay the foundations of a permanent solution to the food problem. There are no funds yet for a new covered market, but a few temporary structures are going up. The end of the war brought Igbos from all parts of Nigeria flocking back into East Central State. Many of them made for the former Biafran capital of Enugu. An official government survey has revealed that three quarters of the city's buildings were destroyed or damaged in the 30-month civil war. When the war ended, it was a ghost town, but now its streets are busy and its houses are crammed with some 600,000 people, nearly twice its pre-war population. More people have meant more mouths to feed, but they've also meant more money in circulation, and this is reflected in the city's increased commercial activity. The government's refusal to recognize Biafran currency left many people literally penniless. Now it has relented and given just 20 Nigerian pounds to anyone handing in 20 pounds or more in Biafran notes, but even this put less than 5 million pounds into circulation. Although life is still a struggle for many people, the Igbo's traditional drive and initiative is evident everywhere. The energy and high spirits are not confined to the fit and well. Two and a half years of hostilities took an enormously heavy toll of dead and wounded on both sides. But with the battle won, federal troops tend the wounds of those they once fought. Ex-Biafrans who are further along the road to recovery get lessons in basket weaving.
The patients have at least one piece of good fortune in that there's no shortage of food in military hospitals like this. Most of the victims of the war were not military but civilian, and they were killed not by bullets but by starvation. It's not known exactly how many civilians died, but many estimates put the figure as high as two million. According to some reports, as many as 50,000 people may have died of starvation since the war ended. The task of dealing with them and all other victims of the war has now been shouldered by the Lagos government, whose Rehabilitation Commission took over from the Nigerian Red Cross in July. This doesn't mean, of course, that the Red Cross has disappeared from the scene. In Nanugu, for example, it uses the premises of the Cheshire Home to care for war orphans. Outside Inugu, it's reported, there are isolated country areas where starvation is as bad as it ever was during the war. But in this home, at least, these particular victims of the war have found all they need for the moment of food, medical attention and love. The young and the injured are not, of course, the only problems the Rehabilitation Commission has to face. There are, for example, vast numbers of unemployed. Many of them are Igbos who left well-paid jobs in other parts of the Federation. The situation's been made worse by the evident unwillingness of the neighboring Southeastern and Rivers states to accept Igbos in responsible positions. Both areas were originally claimed by the Igbos as part of Biafran territory. The overall problems of reconstruction are enormous. After eight months of peace, communications are still disrupted and both agriculture and industry are struggling to find their feet. Fortunately, the one thing the Igbos of East Central State don't lack is brains. The Igbos have always considered themselves better educated, if not more intelligent, than many of their fellow Nigerians. Whether true or not, the claim is now a useful spur to the Igbos to overcome the disruption caused by the war. Many school buildings were wrecked or severely damaged in federal air attacks, and classes are still being held in the open air. Most schools in East Central are run by the churches or other voluntary bodies who are now helping with relief payments to pupils in need. Under normal circumstances, however, schooling has to be paid for and many parents would like to see the state's temporary control over the schools made permanent. On the whole, there's surprisingly little bitterness now that the war is over. In spite of their sufferings, most people are philosophical, even optimistic. Having fought and lost the struggle for national identity, the Igbos have no alternative but to face the future as Nigerians and to do the best they can to forget the past. Okay.